to all of us the future of the smartphone. The first iPhone revolutionized a decade of technology and changed the world in the process. Now, 10 years later, it is only fitting that we are here in this place on this day to reveal a product that will set the path for technology for the next decade. This is iPhone 10. It is the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil back up. Phil? Thank you, Tim. I think you can imagine there are a lot of people at Apple that didn't get much sleep last night preparing for this. Is this, this is so exciting. I mean, it is all screen. It is beautiful to look at. It is incredible to hold. The display fits edge to edge, top to bottom. It goes into each corner where it follows the tight curve of the design. It has glass on both the front and the back, using the same super strong formula as iPhone 8. The band is made from a surgical grade stainless steel that's both durable and polishes to a beautiful finish. And look how the glass and the stainless steel fit, form a continuous surface from front to back. There has never been anything like it. It's engineered to be water and dust resistant at a microscopic level. Comes in two beautiful finishes, space gray and silver. Each has an incredible depth and a pearlescence to the color in the glass. iPhone 10 has an all new display. It's called the Super Retina Display. The level of quality and responsiveness and efficiency is really quite a breakthrough in mobile displays. To start with, the Super Retina Display is 5.8 inches on the diagonal. It's got 2436 by 1125 resolution. That's over 2.7 million pixels. It has 458 pixels per inch. Now, this is the highest resolution and pixel density ever in an iPhone. I mean, it's remarkable how this larger display can be packed into a phone that fits so comfortably in our hands. The Super Retina display uses OLED technology. Now, this is the first OLED display great enough to be in an iPhone. Traditional OLED displays have had great benefits, like high contrast and resolution, and no backlight means you can make them thinner. But they came with trade-offs in brightness and rich colors and color accuracy, at least compared to our retina displays. But the super retina display overcomes all of these deficiencies and lives up to all that we expect from an iPhone display. In addition, the new super retina display supports HDR in both the Dolby Vision and HDR10 formats. It has an incredible a million to one contrast ratio. It has the best color accuracy. It integrates our unique 3D touch technology right into the display. And like iPhone 8, it includes True Tone. That's more fluid, more intuitive. So let's start with the simplest thing. How do you wake up your iPhone 10? Well, certainly you can raise to wake just like before, but now you can also just tap on the screen and it wakes up. Now with the display going edge to edge and top to bottom, there's no more home button. 
And this is an important part and a big step forward in the iPhone user experience. Something we use hundreds of times a day for so many tasks is an opportunity to rethink how iPhone should work and how we can make it better. So now, when you want to go to the home screen, you simply swipe up from the bottom and you go home. It's that simple. It's that easy. It's incredibly smooth. And once you do it for the first time, you'll know there's never been a better way. And it works the same way across the system. If you're running an app like Mail and you want to go home, what do you do? You simply swipe up from the bottom and you go home. It's that easy and that intuitive and so much nicer. Now, the same fluid gesture also works for multitasking. So if you're in an app and you want to multitask, you just swipe up from the bottom, you pause for a split second, and you're in multitasking. And there you can tap on any app and jump right to it. We also use the home button for Siri. So how are we going to do that now? Well, of course, you can just speak to your phone as before and say, hey, Siri. No, I didn't set anyone's phones off. <laughs> or you can now press the side button in, which has been made larger. And once you press it in, you can just talk to Siri. I know what you're thinking about. Well, what about unlocking? How do you unlock your phone with iPhone 10? I mean, this has been a very important part of the iPhone user experience from the very beginning. The first iPhone, we led the way with multi-touch, and we created slide to unlock. And this protected the iPhone from turning on when you didn't want it to, like in your pocket. Starting with iPhone 5S, we invented Touch ID. We made it fast and easy to protect all your data and unlock your phone with just your fingerprint. And Touch ID became the gold standard in consumer device biometric protection. But we know we can do something that's better. With iPhone 10, your iPhone is locked until you look at it and it recognizes you. Nothing has ever been simpler, more natural, and effortless. We call this Face ID. So Face ID is the future of how we will unlock our smartphones and protect our sensitive information. To make Face ID possible took some of the most advanced technology we have ever created. And much of it is packed right up here into this tiny little area at the top of the display. We call this the True Depth Camera System. And it is an dot projector. And that's not all. There's also the proximity sensor, the ambient light sensor, the speaker and microphone, all packed into this True Depth Camera System area. It is amazing. And here's how it works. Every time you glance at your iPhone 10, it detects your face with the flood illuminator, even in the dark. The IR camera takes an IR image. The dot projector projects out over 30,000 invisible IR dots. We use the IR works to create a mathematical model of your face. And then we check that mathematical model against the one that we've stored that you set up earlier to see if it's a match and unlock your phone. And this all happens in real time. It all happens invisibly. You don't see these things going off. It's incredible. It just all works and all. Thousands of people around the world and the team took over a billion images, multiple neural networks to create Face ID. And to process the machine learning in Face ID's neural networks, we built Apple's first ever neural engine. Yeah, this is a big deal. In our pockets, in our phones, is an A11 Bionic chip with a built-in neural engine. Now, the neural engine is specialized hardware built for a specific set of machine learning algorithms. This is another example of the incredible collaboration between the hardware and software teams that's only possible at Apple. The neural engine is a state-of-the-art ultra-fast processing system. It uses our highest density computing ever. It's a dual-core design. It can perform over 600 billion operations per second, and it's used to the real-time processing of Face ID recognition. But for all of us, it's just super easy and fun to use. 
When you set up Face ID, you just follow the on-screen instructions, and it tells you how to move your head around in the camera so Face ID can recognize your face. And that's it. You do that once when you set it up. And Face ID learns your face. Even if you change your hairstyle, you decide to put on glasses, you're wearing a hat, so you do it up any way you do it, Face ID learns your face. It learns who you are. And it adapts to you as your face changes over time. Let's say you start to grow a beard. Yeah.